Well, I think collectively is the key word. That they work and collaborate together and that both are motivated to help the other and each takes an interest in the other. Dedication. 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 Yeah. Too many too many people aren't dedicated in their learning or in their teaching. And um, I think I think if you're dedicated you will succeed. But I think a lot of people don't take their education seriously. Yeah. I think that's the major problem. Yeah. As you accumulate some experience and uh, you, you see you see what needs to be done and what the students can succeed in their chosen profession. Those are cliches, but probably the experience that I can I can dispense my wisdom. One of my first goals is to get the excitement about students in terms of learning in general. So that would be successful for me is to have a student be excited about what he was doing and to want to do some more after the class was over. And to get that kind of success, one of the critical needs is to have students feel confident and uh, feel like they can handle information that they never thought they could handle before. A uh, good professor, someone who's got the right uh, energy, uh, in classroom because it is immediately reflected right back with them from the students. Someone who has uh, compassion and, and uh, like a realty to it. Someone who's obviously involved in whatever subject they're into. Someone who's not just faking it just because they have, have to teach that specific subject. I think that um, students need to be um, respectful enough of teachers to make them feel comfortable enough that um, they can teach their students. Our learning never stops and I, I think I'm an example of that by coming back to school as a 40 some year old person. Uh, I continually read books and find ways to better my knowledge of things. Well, as, Conf as, you know, as Confucius said, there is no end to learning. It says it right there. <laughs> And when people realize that, I think they'll become more motivated. I don't know. That's a question I continually grapple with. Maybe that's my whole uh, vocation, is to grapple with how do you get students interested without making it like, you know, uh, some kind of stage show where you're there to entertain people. How do you make stuff challenging and, and difficult, really difficult, um, and not lose people? A good student is someone who is respectful, someone who listens, and then interacts. I mean, there's uh, people who are shy and don't say anything, but um, it doesn't make you a good student if you never say a word and you're never a troublemaker. Sometimes you have to raise the flag, raise your hand, and say what's on your mind. I think that that's what makes a good student. I want their sponsors. I want them to raise their hand and ask or even argue with me if they disagree with something. Wow, the ideal learning environment. I think, I think it would be like where I could really make a difference with people and help them in some way that I could give them the things that they wanted. Like, if they really wanted to transfer someplace, I could help them with that. Or if they really wanted to investigate something, I could help them with that. Or we could like, you know, work on it together and, and get somewhere with it. When people are sort of riding a conveyor belt I, and they don't really know what they want and why they're riding that conveyor belt, I can't really help them. The goal of the education. So. To gain a understanding of the world in a, as a whole, where you can um, go out and not remain in a bubble. To uh, gain knowledge mm -hmm. that you could use throughout your life to uh, be a successful citizen in the world. I think being successful as a student is not necessarily getting a I think it's understanding the concepts and understanding the, the ability to practice what you're learning in class. I don't think it has anything to do with grades. I don't think it has anything to do with um, what you actually accomplish in the class as much as it has to do with understanding the concepts that are being taught in class and then being able to practice those concepts out in the real world. Uh,
you know, so you know, take yourself and, and uh, at the end of the day, and if you worked hard to get an F, then great, pat yourself on the back, take yourself out for a chai latte, and, and move on and, and still, and, and, and look at the goals that you have. Okay, what do I want? I want such and such a career, and in order to get that, I need a degree. So I'm just going to watch myself, I'm going to imagine myself wearing my graduation gown, <laughs> and do whatever it takes to get there because I'm going to have fun along the way, regardless of what grades I get. <laughs> well, what should the goal of an education be? To become more fully human. Does that sound dorky? It sounds Frarian. But I think in the end, um, was it Thoreau who said something like he wanted to, he didn't want to die knowing he had not lived, and I would like students to not feel like they had gone to college yet had not been educated. One goal is to become a well-rounded individual. Okay, a, a renaissance man or woman, so to speak. Uh, the other one is to become qualified in a field you're interested in, I would say. But uh, as I said, one of, one of the main, main things is become well-rounded. I mean, for example, become, as they say, a jack of all trades. I know it's, it's difficult for a student to, and for me it was difficult to, to see the reason for some classes for me. What is the reason for statistics? When I have to take statistics, <laughs> or you know, classes like that. But with hindsight, I can see the benefit of that. Learning how to think and how to organize my life—that's what—that's what the that, school taught. I would say find a way to be interested in your classes. Um, and but uh, but it's also the student's responsibility to find a way to get excited about what they're doing. But it's just coming to class is not good enough, you have to be dedicated. How else can you motivate yourself? It's something inside you. Vậy ý kiến của thầy thì thứ nhất là khi người ta có trái tim truyền đạt đối với các vị thầy giáo khi có lòng thương đối với các em học trò và có trách nhiệm rất là, là nghiêm túc thế thì thầy giáo có thể tạo ra cái điều kiện cái môi trường cái không gian rất là thuận lợi để cho học trò học cái thứ hai về phần học trò là nếu các sinh viên mà họ học không phải vì để có văn bằng để có công an việc làm mà học vì muốn nâng cái kiến thức của mình lên coi cái học là một loại niềm vui và muốn cống hiến cái gì đó cho đời trong tương lai muốn hoàn thiện phẩm chất mình pay attention to what's going on in your classes right now because you are the future and all of the issues that are happening in the world right now that you're learning about in your classes will be on your plate to resolve when you get out of class and the things that you're learning in class do have something to do with what you'll be working on when you get out of school. If you had something to say to your professors, what would mm, you I would say thank you. And I would say that even though you probably don't hear that enough in your profession, that your students do appreciate what you do, and that you are an integral part of helping individuals shape the future of the world. To dedicate your entire life to teaching others is, is very admirable and very respectful. Um, even those who don't do it that well, you still got to give the respect for dealing with it every day, dealing with a lot of, a lot of stupid kids, I guess. Uh, to professors, um, I commend you on your job. It's a difficult job. I sit there and uh, especially with um, today's environment and where pay is not all that uh, good for uh, professors or teachers. I think that uh, it's very commendable, the job that you're doing. And for the ones that are really passionate about their job and care about their students, uh, 
I really take my hat off to you. Fantastic.